run. Hooked up. Oh my god, what is this? It's a, oh, look who's, someone's getting jealous. Good morning. What is cranking wieners? Welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful day. It's so warm, a little gloomy, but it's nice. The roosters are crowing, the cows are mooing, and we have quite the day ahead of us. This has been probably one of the longer couple months of my entire fishing career. I've just been fishing nonstop. Not so much filming, unfortunately, but a lot of fishing, still chasing that double digit bass. I figured we'd set back a little bit, peel back, relax, and film something a little bit different. So we have not been ignoring you guys. We've been seeing a lot of comments on the most recent videos. And one of the more popular ones is, John, what happened to the backyard pond? And today we are gonna answer that very question. We are in the Bass Barn right now, for those of you guys who are new. Things are looking a little bit less dirty than they have been. I, I do wanna do a Bass Barn update video because I know, I know you guys would find this interesting. I've done a lot to this barn as of recently, but um, Alex and I just put this up. Look at that. This was a suggested idea that you guys gave us. A lot of people were saying we should have a pulley system, but I feel like me with some sort of hanging 100 pound kayak would just result in disaster. So we opted for this route. This is actually something that uh, one of the Guggen guys, Grant, built for me. So yeah, it's just something very simple. Just a bit of plywood, some nails. You can fit all four kayaks on here so that they're out of the way and everything's a little bit more seamless. But again, that is for a different video, a different day. Let's uh, head on down the property and check out the pond. Let's see what we got cranking over there. There she is. It is, dude, it is so nice out today. It is like nice overcast, high 60s, low 70s, perfect day for fishing. But you know what we're gonna do instead of fishing? We're gonna mess with the pond. We're gonna get this thing fishing ready. Not too long ago, somebody reached out to me. I'm gonna keep it a secret, but someone reached out to me the other day, may or may not be a YouTuber, and said, hey, I just went to a private pond and I caught some bass. Would you happen to want me to put them in the pond? Sure, why not? He's already got them in his live well. Might as well drop them off. So uh, an individual came through and dropped off some bass in the pond. So I actually have to figure out a way to get them out. Apparently they're a little bit smaller than I anticipated. Some are literally 10 inches and we're trying to grow a big bass factory. That's kind of the name of the pond. This was just something that kind of fell in my lap. So we're like, hey, whatever, put some bass in the pond. So before we um, renovate this here deal, let's see if we can catch some fish. You might be able to notice the pond has changed a lot. The water's gotten a little bit higher. The water's actually cleaner. And uh, yeah, as I said before, there's bass in here. Something like 11 bass. Not ideal. The pond is not fully ready to be stocked yet, although we may put some fish in here on camera within the next few weeks. I just gotta figure out a good place to get them and I wanna get the right size. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you're stocking a pond, whether it be bass, bluegill, crappie, Generally, you want the bigger fish because those fish are gonna have the better genetics, unless it's like a super old bass or something like that. So we gotta figure out a place to get big bass. If you guys know of a spot, let me know. If there's like a spot in DFW, North Texas, South Texas, we're willing to travel to, to find some giant bass to put in the pond. But as of now, there's nothing but dinks in here, like 10, 11, 12 inches. So we gotta get these guys out. Um, there is, I think, one or two big ones, but other than that, they're all very tiny, tiny, like, this big, like lucky size. Oh, some whack ass. Okay. We're on, boys. Oh, we're on, hooked up. Oh my God, what is this? Oh, that is not, that is not a, that is not a bass. Holy, dude, that oh, thing is huge. Warmouth? Did we get any of these on camera? Do you remember that when we put the camera in the water? Did we see any of these? Look at the size of the freaking mouth on that thing. He's old too, he's an old fish. Dude, that is a huge green sunfish. That is, <laughs> do you expect that? No. Well, I just was talking about how I, we have green sunfish in here from, you know, the previous video that you saw where we trapped those little things, but never did we see anything that big. So this pond got dug out like six or seven times. There of course was that giant freeze in Texas where this probably almost froze solid. So that means that fish has survived all of that. Pretty incredible. Wow, not what I expected, but nice little bycatch there. <laughs> okay, put the rod down, decided to uh, take a moment to show you guys what's new at the pond. And if I'm being completely honest, not much, other than the fact, like I've said a hundred times, 
There are bass. I love the water clarity. I think last time you saw it, it was literal poop color, dookie colored water. But now it's kind of this like turquoise bluish green. It's starting to look good. We just haven't had that insane rain yet here in Texas. To put this in perspective, the water level should be like right up to there so that you can barely see this island and this island is for the most part uh, submerged. There's so much we still need to do. For example, we need to stock some bait in here before we stock some bass because the bass need to eat on something. They've got natural stuff like insects, frogs, mud bugs, things of that nature, and of course some of the bluegill. But we really need to put some true, all organic, all natural bait. Uh, we need to create some structure for these fish because at the moment it's just a mud hole. And uh, one thing that we're gonna try to do today is plant some aquatic life. And then along with that, maybe just maybe create some rock piles and some spawning areas because we want this to be a viable place so that fish can spawn, reproduce, and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Hence the name, Big Bass Factory. So we're gonna head on over to Home Depot right now and grab all that stuff to make this thing true. We'll see you there. All right, we're in Home Depot. Sorry, everything's blue. We're in Lowe's right now, we're not in Home Depot. We need to probably head on over to the garden department because we're gonna get some pebbles, some sand because we, like I said, wanna make a nice spawning environment for these bass and these bluegill. There's a couple other things I'm gonna leave for a surprise, but I saw this the other day and I thought this would be really sick in the pond. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this too, but the, the parameter of the pond's looking a little Scrubby. I don't know what the best seat is. So I'm probably just gonna pick the first thing I see and we'll call it that. Pea gravel. All right, we got pea gravel, we've got river rock, same rock we actually used up in the main pond. And now we need something big and chunky. The pea gravel is good because bass can spawn on that. River rock is good because it just holds some heat. It's really dark colored, so anytime it's cold and it's sunny, that will hold some heat and it'll make the, the fish feel nice and nice and warm. But next, we need some huge rocks, some much bigger ones, some chunk rock. This is the bricks, I know, but just use your imagination. <sighs> chunk rock. Dude, they got weed here. They got what? Yeah, marijuanas. <laughs> I didn't know you could sell that here in Texas, that's crazy. Oh, this looks, I think this is an indica right here. This must be the indica and then this is the uh, stativa. Is that what this is? Yeah, let's get this one. Why not? Let's do all kinds of stuff today. We'll plant some trees, we'll build a pond. Just have a day of it, you know? I saw this the other day. I don't know if it's legit because it looks like, you know, the cup that you'd, you'd find at 7-Eleven and drink a Slurpee out of, but apparently there's water lilies in here. They're $10 a piece. This, of course, is not it. It's just showing you what it would look like. Lily pads in a pond would look sick, and it would make for such an awesome habitat for these bass, but I do know that these are notorious for uh, basically overtaking the entire waterway. So we're going to get a couple, see how they do. It's just as weird that it comes in a cup. A Slurpee cup. Yeah, lily pad Slurpees. I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. We'll try it out. We got sand, we got pebbles, we got pee, pee gravel. We bought a legal marijuana plant. And then over here, we're gonna pick up the rest of our stuff. Breakfast burger for you. Thank you. Breakfast burger for me, courtesy of Kay. He's got it, he's got it. We're on, ooh, let's go. What is this? Is this another freaking green sunfish? Oh my God, it is. <laughs> it's a big one too. Is that the same one we just caught? No, yeah. This might actually, oh look, he's got a minnow in his mouth, look at that. Well, I swear I thought there was bass in here, but I guess they're all just giant green sunnies. It's kind of cool, learn something new every day. That's a bass. Ooh, let's go! <laughs> that was so cool, dude. He was way up in the reeds. <laughs> no, he came off! All right, now that I got that out of my system, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get to work here and turn this into a true big bass factory. The big rocks go over there in the deeps. This is what you would essentially call the dam. You got a nice little feeder easement creek, whatever you wanna call it right there, and there's another little creek right there. So maybe we put the sand in those spots because generally bass follow the creeks to spawn. Current at least, not creeks, but current to spawn. Maybe some small rocks over there too. Pea gravel and sand in this area. 
I think it's a good plan. Pebbles are in the pond, doesn't look like much, but all that dirty water you see over there is where there's now some pea gravel. It's right at the mouth of a little kind of inlet where there's gonna be water pouring in, so this fish will get attracted to the current, find that pea gravel, and hopefully make some big bass babies. But now we are onto the sand. Some nice, soft, moist, moist, keyword moist, sand. I'm gonna put it on the back side of this island where it's actually pretty deep. I know a lot of this probably doesn't make sense because the water's so low right now, but we're anticipating hoping that we get a big range, so. I'm just doing this kind of thinking ahead. We did it. Sand in the pond. Stones in the pond. Probably should have bought more. You get the point. It'll do the job. This is going to be a nice little protected area for them spawning bass to come up here, do their fanning thing, make some babies, and lay some eggs. Yeah, we've got pebbles and sand, two prime spawning zones. We should play a game, take a drink every time John says spawning. What's up, Mr. Caterpillar? That's good luck. You just had a uh, little Amazon Prime delivery. Oh, nice. Probably more underwear. <laughs> Thank you. We're starting off small, working our way up bigger. They're gonna take the river rock and put it on this little flat that's just behind Alex. And then once we do that, we're gonna put the big dogs, the giant rocks right at the dam. So we have a nice deep rocky area for those fish to sun up on and uh, get warm in those colder months because it does get cold here in North Texas, as you probably know already. the grand finale, my favorite. These are what really matter. I don't know what compelled me to do this, but I planted a tree. It's supposed to get to 10 feet high. I like to actually, all seriousness, plant 
some willows, some cypress trees, some bald cypress. That's the next thing. I don't know if you could buy bald cypress, but if you can, they're going right here. That'd be so sick. Anyway, there she is. My little, my little marijuana plant. Uh, I mean, uh, Japanese maple. Decide to spread seed, it gets windy. Of course. You need to start wearing some like Nike, uh, yeah. what are those, Nike Monarchs or something like that? The dad sneakers, the Monarchs? Oh yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a Home Depot commercial. Ba -ba -boom -ba -boom -ba -ba. Yeah, I know you guys like to see me catch fish, but I'm so sick of fishing, at least for the next few days, that I'm gonna get right back on the wagon. I've actually got a, a derby this weekend. My second tournament in a long time. That last Ray Roberts tournament really compelled me to kick it into full gear and try to fish some local stuff around here. Nothing too hardcore. Damn, that's a good seed spreader. Well, that is gonna to conclude today's video. I don't know what number we're on as far as Texas pond restoration goes, but this one was fun. I feel like Probably should've gotten some more materials, but this gives us an excuse to film a new video with 10 times the amount of rocks and sand. This was just kind of getting started. Um, I also wanted to show you guys what's new with the pond. Clearly a lot, seeing as we're now catching fish out of the pond. You let us know what we should film next at the pond. Should it be a stocking video? Should we create some structure? Should we plant some more trees? I don't know, I kind of like planting trees. It's very uh, therapeutic. But anyway, uh, shout out to Alex for helping me out on this one. Today, we are peacing out, signing out. I bid farewell to all you wieners out there. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time. As always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.